So the shapes of complex eyes, it links really nicely into atoms, bonds and groups. So if you remember your shapes from atoms, bonds and groups, it's pretty similar to what we're going to do now. It depends on the number of... The only thing that's different is you don't worry about lone pair. It only depends on the number of dative bonds you've got, so the number of coordinate bonds. So, first one, if I have two coordinate bonds, what shape do you reckon it's going to be? What shape would it be in atoms, bonds, groups? Two bonds. Don't worry about lone pairs. Linear. It's going to be linear. Yeah. So um, he's going to be linear. So an example is actually a silk compound. So two means that he has a linear shape. So e.g. So this is my ligand. The way I write it, I've got my metal, my ligand in brackets, and how many I've got, and I put the whole thing in square brackets and it's got a plus charge. So it's AG and the two ammonias whoops, like so, form dative covalent bonds. So the arrow showing the dative covalent bond, I make sure it starts from the lone pair, which is on my nitrogen, and I put the whole thing in square brackets to show it's got a plus charge. If I've got, let's do four coordinate bonds, what shape do you reckon it's gonna be? Four bonded pairs? Yeah, tetrahedral. It can actually do something else as well. It can form square plane as well. So, four coordinate bonds, there are two shapes that it can do. You don't need to, you only need to know a couple of examples as to which one does what. So I'm gonna do both. The first one, so um, it can go tetrahedral. And an example of that would be a cobalt with four chloride ions attached to him. So I've got my cobalt in the middle. The easiest way of drawing these is to do your bonds as you're used to. Once you've done that, put arrows on the heads then put lone pairs so that you remember to do that and then put your ligands like so and then the whole thing in square brackets and it's got a two minus charge. So that's the first shape. The other shape it can be is square planar. So it can also be square planar. Um, an example of that would be a platinum complex. So platinum with four chlorides, two minus. So the way to draw square planar is you have two wedges coming out, two dashes going back, put your arrowheads on, put your lone pairs on, and then put your ligands on, like so. It just makes sure that you tick all the boxes, and then that's two minus, like so. Uh, just if we're gonna, bond angle for linear is gonna be 180. Bond angle for tetrahedral, 109.5. And bond angle for square planar, 90 degrees in the name, 90 degrees. Uh, so six coordinate bonds, um, it's going to be octahedral. So an example of that would be copper surrounded by six water ligands, two plus. 
Old Cathedral gets a little bit messy to draw. So, put your copper in, first of all. And then, as they draw your pawns, two coming out like so, and then a dash going back. Then, I put my lone pairs on the end. So I remember to do that. And put my arrows on the end to show that they are dated Korean bonds. And then you've got to be really careful because which atom is the lone pair on in water? Oxygen. So you must always have oxygen on that lone pair. Otherwise, you could easily lose marks. And then you put the whole thing in square brackets and put your charger in, like so. Bond angles, octahedral is going to be 